Okay, welcome everybody to, to, to this next session. Um, I'm really excited to introduce Peter Milsom. Peter is a highly credentialed project management consultant, an IPMA assessor. He's a board member at PMAC. He's an active participant in the development of several international standards. And Peter is a well-known figure in the PM community. I've known him for several years and I've always found him to be just a, an amazing resource, full of knowledge, uh, we're lucky to have him here. Thank you very much, Peter. Today, Peter's going to be talking about PMAX PM competence and specialty certifications, which we haven't talked about yet today. So thank you very much, Peter. Um, love to hear what you have to say. Excellent. Thanks, Kevin. So uh, for today, we'll be going through, as, as Kevin mentioned, the, um, the PMAC, the PM competence and specialty certifications. A bit of that was covered in the last session, but we'll go in a bit more detail. So for today's presentation, um, slight overview of, of IPMA. We'll go through the IPMA certifications and levels, spend a little bit of time on the IPMA competency focus, just because it's a little bit different from other um, project management um, ways of dealing with things. We are going to spend some time on the IPMA CCT. It's a new initiative. We're really excited about that. Um, and it's, it's, it's a more accessible uh, opportunity within IPMA. And of course, we'll go through the PMAC, the specialty certifications. And at the end, uh, questions and answers, if anything comes up, please feel free um, using the chat or raise hand. We're keeping an eye on those things. As Kevin mentioned, um, my OCD kicks in every now and again. Um, I have, for some bizarre reason, decided to participate in and take a number of certifications. I've got a pretty good idea um, within these, these areas. Um, consulting, uh, benefits, value, business cases, risk, um, business architecture, obviously project program, portfolio, and assessment. So I've earned all of these. So I've got a pretty good idea about the differences and the, and the values in each. Spent a lot of time um, working on different standards. I've done a lot with ISO. Uh, in fact, I was the convener for ISO 21502. That was the recent uh, project management guidance. And that offered a lot of really interesting insights in terms of where the community is going and what each of the service providers are, uh, are dealing with. So we'll try to include some of that information as well. So IPMA, what is it? Not as well known in the Americas, um, pretty much the rest of the world, it is extremely well known. So it started uh, 1965, so it's been around for a while. And technically, it's the world's first international project management association uh, situated out of, uh, out of Switzerland. Now, as of today, I think there's about 70 um, national member associations that are part of this. So it is a global community. Um, and, and one of the advantages with this is culturally, structurally, it is a very diverse, um, multinational, uh, multicultural organization, which is different than some of the other um, associations I find. Now, in terms of um, the membership and, and certifications, so IPMA has four. Uh, competence-based certifications. And I think we mentioned that this in the last session. So level A, B, C, and D, um, which uh, PMAC covers off on. And just as a point of reference, if you are a member uh, of PMAC, you are represented within IPMA and you have access to all of this information. One of the things personally I've noticed um, when comparing uh, events within the Americas, as opposed to the IPMA events, which take place all over the world, um, Europe, Asia, um, you know, Oceania, the Africa, it, it's the, the level of dialogue and the, and what is being dealt with seems to be at a, at a higher level, um, not necessarily more technical, but definitely at, uh, at a richer level, I find. Uh, and getting access to this is a wonderful opportunity. And for those who may be interested, um, we find that the, um, uh, the IPMA, the Young Crew um, community is a fantastic entry point uh, into IPMA. Uh, and, and they do a lot of really neat stuff. So four levels. Um, and keeping in mind, each of these are for project, program and portfolio. And it's important to 
emphasize that there are um cultural is not the right word um th there are differences in perspectives so for example in the americas we would consider a program to be multi-project um, or possibly a really large project with an ipma a, a program it, it is that is a, a transformational uh, initiative with multiple projects that you know focus on strategic objectives and benefits so that's what we're looking for so if you're going to the program discipline or space you have to make sure that you're you're fulfilling those those requirements so again there's there are differences between the different associations of how they interpret um, these also how they interpret the different levels so for example um, uh, level D, uh, the Certified Project Management Associate. So someone who's involved in the project, this is fundamentally a, a knowledge-based um, experience, if you will. Um, not as much dealt with the, um, the uh, um, more of the experience, hands-on um, you know, knowledge uh, dealt with. It, it's mainly you know, the knowledge. Well, I'll mention this in, in a follow-on slide. It's important again to realize that IPMA approaches things slightly different than other associations, uh, but we'll, we'll go through that in, in more detail. So certified project manager, you have an awareness. Um, you have been a, a project manager, smaller project. Um, you, as I said, you are experienced. You can demonstrate this. Uh, you have you know, hands-on um, experience, you, smaller projects. Um, one of the things that IPMA does is we, your, your projects are evaluated against a competency assessment model. So your projects will be evaluated to confirm which of these levels um, you would be applicable for. And it's 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 a it's a very fair, uh, very understandable uh, approach. But we do rank the um, uh, your projects based on a competency assessment model. So for the level B, the certified senior project manager, that's that's a that is a senior, experienced individual that has dealt with complex projects. Now again, there's an important um, consideration here within IPMA. So again, those seventy um certification bodies national uh, associations they all use the same uh, approaches documents competency assessments okay so a an ipma level c in canada is equal to an ipma level c uh, in the uk or germany or switzerland or or somewhere else so we're all evaluated equally um, and in general the, the the processes are are similar but you are evaluated based on on the competency assessment for each of these so you have to you have to keep in mind that there there is a certain level of rigor at each one of these levels so again level c certified project manager you've done something you have some experience with uh, with projects for level b again certified senior project manager these are real projects this is something significant where i was going um i lost my train of thought on the uh, the culture side it isn't necessarily um money Okay, so money actually isn't even really part of the competency assessment, uh, the complexity assessment um, that we do, but it's the level of complexity and and and, uh, and, and challenges within the project. So for giggles, um, certified project director level A, that is that is an exclusive club, um, if you will. The it, it's. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it is not an easy um, designation certification to get. Um, the requirements are quite high. Uh, the demands are quite high. Uh, what you have to provide is quite detailed. Uh, it, it takes it takes a lot of work uh, even to put in the submission. And there's still the interviews and, and everything else. And there aren't that many um, IPMA level A's in the world. It, like I said, it's a pretty exclusive club. Again, your project has to be pretty significant um and and complex so again you're evaluated against each of these it's it's clear in the materials what what you require what the steps are what the process is um but it's it is a bit of work going through these so you should expect you know it, it's competency-based assessments so it's uh, it's slightly different now in terms of pricing just to provide context 
Um, keeping in mind uh, that for, for each of these, so certified project director, certified program director, portfolio director, there's a lot of work involved, not just for yourself, but for the assessors. And again, there's always two assessors. We have to do the interviews, we have to deal with your references, we have to go through all, you know, the CV, we have to go through all of your um, submissions and material and case studies, and we have to confirm that you have demonstrated a certain level of ability, knowledge, and competency within each of these areas. So it's, it's a fair amount of work for both sides uh, to go through this. Uh, senior um, project uh, program portfolio manager, again, it's, it's expensive, but it's, it's reasonable. And obviously, the further down you get, the, uh, the, the cheaper it is, okay? Uh, the, the certified uh, project management associate, um, that's, you know, it's, it's hard to compare and contrast these between the different associations based on the, the requirements, the knowledge which you're dealing with. Um, I mean, for giggles, I did the, um, the UK um, level D. Now, this was about 10 years ago before ICB4, uh, the recent version of ICB. And, and actually, I, I took the easy path for their level D, uh, because I had a Prince II um, practitioner certificate. So I got the easy course and the easy certification. That was probably one of the toughest certifications I've ever had to do, okay? It was hands-on, whatever else. Now that changed in ICB-4. They've made things a lot easier and they've also made it a lot more, uh, everything's common between the different groups. So just understand different countries deal with things in a different way and have different maturity levels. So IPMA did a really good job um, with the, um, the ICB-4, uh, which we'll discuss in a second, um, and the recent um, documentation and rules so that it's, it's easier um, and more accessible for people. So that's the price point. It, it, it is not inexpensive, but it is worthwhile. Now, again, in terms of the certifications, um, and again, this is this is based on ICB-4, which I, that came out in 2015. And now it was interesting, as I mentioned before, um, I was the convener for ISO 21502, uh, released in 2020, December 2020. It was fascinating in terms of getting the different multicultural um, discipline um, national perspectives on project management. And one of the interesting insights, though there, you saw the recent um, PIMBOK 7. There is a major overhaul of that, possibly because of that standard. Um, but what, one of the things that we noticed with, was with IC before, it still largely is compliant with ISO 21502. So it's, it's pretty up to date and current. And even with that aside, um, the ICB is going through a review right now um, to uh, you know any necessary updates or, or whatever. So every five to seven years, it's always reasonable to, to review the material. Um, so again, the competency assessments offered by PMAC geared to assess the knowledge and experience and the demonstrated knowledge and experience of project managers. Um, there's also the observation here that um, you obviously project managers require knowledge, but you have to have a, a fundamental understanding of just general business knowledge and to be able to display certain behaviors um, and personal traits. Um, project management is a, it, it's a people person discipline. Um, we are involved in, you know, we're the ones responsible for herding the cats and getting people to you know, sign up and, and do things um, and deliver, you know, often under challenging circumstances. So, you know, Interpersonal skills, they call it emotional intelligence, cultural intelligence, all of this is very important. And IPMA deals with that and we assess that. So in terms of the, um, the competency assessment model, so it looks at the whole person and we'll go through that in a second. But what they're looking at is approximately 29 specific elements, okay? And we want to see your understanding of that, but what also you've demonstrated at what level of maturity and understanding. So when we say competence, what, what do we mean? Um, so competency, and I'm, I apologize, I'm gonna read this. 
Individual competence is the application of knowledge, skills, and abilities in order to achieve the desired results, okay? So that is exactly what we as, as assessors for people going through the process, but you as possible candidates um, choosing whichever of the designations you would like to get, you have to demonstrate. Um, so, you know, do you have the knowledge? Great, can you demonstrate that knowledge? Do you have the skills? Great, can you demonstrate those, those skills? Do you have the abilities? Obviously a combination of skills and knowledge, and how has that been demonstrated? One of the things that IPMA offers is something called key competency indicators for each of these competencies, where you can quantifiably demonstrate that you are competent for each of those. Um, so we have these definitive indicators for project program and portfolio management, just making sure that it, the intent is that we're talking apples to apples and not apples to coconuts. Um, there's sometimes different interpretations of words or, or concepts, perceptions, as, as I mentioned with, with program management. So it's making sure that we're all, you know, talking the same language. So again, these competencies, they address the knowledge, skills, and abilities through experience, hands-on experience. You have to be able to demonstrate that. So the IPMA competency. Um, they used to have something called the, uh, the eye of competence that, that changed in the ICD-4, but effectively what they're looking at is three areas. So what do we mean? Um, the three areas are the, the people competencies, okay? And, and as mentioned here, they show your personal and interpersonal competencies, okay? That are required obviously for project program or portfolio management. Um, and that's something that I would say is, is more unique with, with IPMA uh, being able to, to demonstrate um, these things. And, and also the, the, not just that, but the, the cultural implications as well, because that, that takes on um, another uh, level of experience. Um, practice competencies. So these are the, this is the, the technical stuff, if you will. Um, so the methods, the tools, techniques um, that are used. It was interesting. Um, one of the differences in 21502, the original was 21500 done in um, uh, 2012. Uh, 21502 published in 2020. We transitioned from a, um, if you will, a process based approach to a practices based approach. So again, following along with this, uh, this uh, concept, it's more of the technical sides um, that are required for, for project program portfolio management. And we assess those uh, so that you can show your competencies. Now, prospective competencies, again, this is a slightly different um, concept within IPMA, but these are, you know, as mentioned here, methods, tools, and techniques um, whereby the individual interacts with the environment, okay, and how you're going to lead um, the different, these, these groups, the people, the organizations, the societies uh, to support. So the perspective competencies is also an important um, emphasis. And again, IPMA has been effectively, we may have changed the word slightly, but we've been doing this for decades. Um, this is not something new. So it's something that we've, we've been dealing with for, uh, for a while. Um, I've got a note here. Um, if, um, if you're more familiar with the American, North American um, approaches, it really helps, um, we find, for you to, to go through this material. Um, you know, there's, there's a, you know, a difference between project success and, and uh, um, uh, project management success. So, you know, we want to emphasize, you know, different things, if you will, um, making sure that it's, it's, uh, it's understood and, you, and you've, you've shown um, how things are, are, are working within these areas. It, like I said, it tends to be a bit of work, but it is, it's a good experience. Um, and again, you are demonstrating a certain level, level of maturity and understanding. Continuing on. Um, so, Putting some specific words. So give me examples of what you're talking about in terms of uh, perspective, people, and practice. So this is what we're going to be evaluating um, and checking on. And I've highlighted here self-assessment. If nothing else, it is a wonderful experience, based on where you are, to just go through these items, um, go through the competencies, go through um, the competency indicators. 
get an understanding of, you know, okay, am I, do I have this? Am I aware of this? How good am I at this? Do I need to do some more training or get some more experience uh, in these areas? It's a really good um, sort of um, self-improvement uh, framework for people to understand this is what's important within the project program portfolio management community and what you should be aware of. Now, again, you, it's not like you have to be, you know, an expert at any one of, well, it helps if you are in some, but you don't have to be an expert in, in everything. Um, for example, for giggles, let's pick, I don't know, finance or, um, or procurement. You don't have to be an expert, <coughs> excuse me, but you have to be aware. Just a sec. Apologies, got a bit of a cough. So again, it's understanding this. And the other point that I wanted to make was there is a difference between this um, and other um, uh, organizational assessment models. As I mentioned, IPMA is very international, uh, diverse, multicultural. Um, one of the things, it, it's gotten better, um, and this isn't a, a criticism of, of, of PMI or the PMBOK or, or, or PMP in, in any way, it's just an observation. Um, in the past, there was a very, um, if you will, American uh, perspective within um, uh, PMI. And then that became very demonstrated with the work that I did with ISO. Uh, and the project management uh, standards that we worked on. So for example, um, the US would not want any more rules because they don't want to pay for more people. They see a role as a, um, as a cost. You know, um, they, they, they were not interested in that. Um, they did not deal with benefits or asset life cycle or even sustainability until I think the last one or two versions, whereas IPMA has been dealing with this for decades. Um, you know, that there was the previous model within uh, PMI of project output, uh, program was uh, benefits, and portfolio was strategy. But you deal with those in all three. Um, and IPMA has recognized that for forever and a day, but it's kind of embedded within their material and culture and training. Again, very much a, um, a top-down, um, do what you're told type type environment. Now it's it has evolved over the past few years, which is great. But IP may had that all the time. So again, you have to keep that into account when you're evaluating these things. So it's it's important to you know have a look, read the material, see what the competency indicators are, and just make sure that you're comfortable um, that you're understanding what we're looking for and why it's important. And again, um, you know, for those that are experienced. This is really the important stuff. You know, this is what you have to have a, a reasonable grounding in, you know, for all of these. So continuing on. So that deals with um, IPMA, um, the four levels, level A, B, C, and D. Recently, um, IPMA came out with a new designation, uh, the CCT. They previously had a uh, project management consultant and program and portfolio management consultant, but it was like the... IPMA level uh, A and B, it was a tough, it was a tough, rigorous program. I, I did it um, years ago through the Austrian um, certification body and it was, it was expensive and it was tough. They completely overhauled uh, the CCT and they made it far more accessible. So the thing is for um, a number of us who've been in the industry for a while, you know, we may not have been managing projects or programs or portfolios um, as hands-on as actively as we did in the past. Um, and we may be doing more training, coaching, and consulting uh, as opposed to actually hands-on. So we wouldn't be eligible uh, for the level A, B, C, or D. Well, D we would, um, but not the other ones. So they came up with this, the CCT, specifically for consultants, coaches, and trainers. And this is a far more um, accessible uh, designation through IPMA. Um, not saying that it isn't rigorous, it is, but the level of effort both for the candidate as well as the assessors is a lot easier. And this is unique. Um, uh, other associations don't have this. And I think they've done a really interesting job. Um, and I think it was part of their marketing initiative to make this far more accessible. So 
<clears throat> it might be something that would be interesting um, to have a look at because it's they've, they've done a really neat job. So uh, consultant and coach, certified executive consultant and coach, certified senior consultant and coach, certified consultant and coach in project management. Uh, then the trainer, same thing with uh, the focus on, on training. Um, so this is again the material um, that that's referenced, and and yeah, you know, who is um, uh, applicable for the CCT? So they mentioned a few things here: freelance consultant, coach, trainer, uh, obviously in the, in the PM field, um, works uh, training or consulting. Uh, interesting, uh, ideal for a professor um, or those working with students. Again, great material. It's a good uh, good to demonstrate your your understanding, and again. This is focused on you know, consulting within the project program portfolio space, which we evaluate. Um, again, providing consultancy services, or indeed you're planning to become a trainer, coach, or consultant. You know, what do I need? Um, and one of the things that uh, the PMAC actually is doing and leading is we're hoping to um, get a, a relationship between CMC Canada and IPMA so that they're, so it's easier if you have your CMC to go through the process. Because a lot of the work that you do for the CMC, you've already done that's required for, for the CCT, well, the, the um, uh, consultants and coaches side. So really exciting initiative. They're being very aggressive um, in terms of accessibility and price point. So you may want to consider um, something along these lines. So that deals with the IPMA work, uh, the certifications and the, the CCT. PMAC also offers some really exciting specialty competency uh, assessment models. So we have um, the Certified Agile Project Management. It's interesting, IPMA also has an Agile uh, designation, but it's, 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 it's a lot of work and it's, it's, it's a little over the top. Um, PMAC actually was doing this years before IPMA even got into the game um, with having done many certifications and a lot of training. Uh, and we've got a really good program, excuse me. So we have the, the Certified Agile Project Manager and the Certified Senior Agile Project Manager. Once again, very accessible, um, you know, good price point, good training. It is advantageous in that it provides both a um, American perspective of Agile as well as a Eurasian perspective of Agile. There is a difference. Um, the PMI interpretation of Agile is very different. It's more um, software focused, IT focused, than the, uh, the European and the Asian perspectives of it. Um, but PMAX covers both off, which is, which is nice to, uh, to deal with. Uh, and it, again, it's more accessible. The, the IPMA one is a little, it's a little heavy. Um, we also have a, uh, an advanced certificate in critical and structured thinking. Um, we have a certificate uh, in um, engineering and procurement construction projects, which is unique. Um, again, both of these are, are specialty certifications and, and, and programs, but you know, we do offer them. Again, out of COVID and all the fun that we had there, uh, we also offer, offer the uh, certificate in virtual and hybrid team management, which is really neat. Um, there, you know, many of us now are experienced enough knowing that, knowing this, the, the new rules. But there is there are a lot of really good practices um, and stuff that you might forget. So this offers a really good insight uh, and best practices in terms of just how to handle virtual and hybrid teams. And recently, uh, we're very excited about this. We have the certified project coordinator, um, which actually I'm going to go into more detail on the next slide. So the the certified project coordinator. Um, there was a, a, a group in um, South Africa that offered something similar. Um, they called it something different, but it, 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 it offers training for individuals that are kind of just getting into the game, if you will. Um, and it allows the, 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 certain, the, the coordinator to demonstrate that, you know, you, you've, you've got the fundamental project management knowledge and skills. Um, and effectively, a lot of this is, is just good, honest administrative skills, um, which projects require. So it's a really good training program for those coming into the community. Um, 
So again, the, the qualification shows you can work in the role as project coordinator or as an assistant, um, again, under the direction of a project program manager. You're, this is not a, a project management certification. This is a uh, project support, which again is very important. And we often don't spend enough time um, understanding the importance of this. Um, it, it's, so I, I do a lot of work with, with ISO. Uh, and one of the things I've come to realize and again, these are senior people. They have been appointed by their, their governments, their national standards bodies, thought leaders in their, their area, you know, very qualified, competent people, cannot manage their way out of a paperback. Um, the basic you know, administration skills that you would expect people to have, it just, you know, a lot of us don't have that. Um, and it's a good reminder of, you know, what are the, the fundamentals, the basics that you need for, for projects. Um, I've recommended to a number of my peers to, to take something like this to, to get the basics. Um, but anyway, so uh, this is one of the new things and very accessible, uh, good price point. Uh, and actually, one of the uh, areas that we're focusing on is uh, immigrants to Canada um, interested in project management and who'd like to get a Canadian uh, qualification. So we're, we're very excited about this. So uh, this is what we've gone through. We've had a brief conversation on IPMA, brief conversation on the IPMA certifications and levels, discuss the prices. Uh, what do we mean by the IPMA competency focus? So you have a, an understanding of, uh, of that. We went through the CCT, which we're very excited about, um, and the, the PMA specialty certifications. So with that, are there any questions and answers? The, that we can deal with. And again, please use um, you know, the chat or speak or whatever. Oh, I'm just looking at um, the chat. Thank you. Um, my question is, if you want to pick up only one certification in project management, which one would you go for and why? We used to have this, this argument all the time. Um, I think Kevin dealt with this slightly in his, in his presentation. Uh, the giggle at the time was, do you want the um, the PMP, obviously North America, that's you know, foundational, uh, IPMA, more international, um, but competency-based as opposed to just knowledge-based. Uh, Prince2, um, do you want a how-to methods approach? And obviously there's, there's other ones. I mean, it's best to get, I personally, I mean, obviously I'm a bad example. You saw my first slide. I went a little bananas on my certifications. Um, it kind of depends on the industry and where you're going. I, if it's at a lower level, I, well, actually, need to be careful how I answer this. Um, I, you yeah, know, I would get both. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a comment I didn't make, um, and, and I'm going to make it now, and I might get into a little trouble with it. All of the things that you learn from IPMA and the ICB4, uh, when you go through the training, when you read the book, they're all useful. It's all hands-on. It's all, um, this is stuff you're going to use. The, the PMI training, you're training to answer a, an exam. Um, and I remember when I took my PMP uh, training, uh, it was, we're teaching you to answer the exam. You can forget a lot of this stuff once you're done. With the IPMA stuff, you're going to use it. it, it it's hands-on, it's practical, it's useful. However, you know, there, there are, you know, there are reasons for both. Um, IPMA definitely at that, you know, depending on the level you're going in has, has valid things. Some clients though, within North America, that's, that's the injury. They don't know IPMA. IPMA has not done as good a job of uh, marketing communications uh, or internationally. Um, but so you, you would require the PMP. It, it's understood. Um, Procep wants to say, can I try addressing this? Why don't um, I will, Go on, Paulus, why don't you answer your perspective of that? Sure, thank you very much. Um, so this is Kevin here. In it, it, the PMP is, it's an inter, it, you know, it's available internationally from PMI through all their international chapters, but the vast majority of the PMPs come from North America. And, and, and as Peter said, in North America, for many years, it was the only game in town that people have heard about. And here's the problem, when people are issuing job notices or posting on job boards they often say for pm jobs must have pmp not pmp or equivalent they're looking for a pmp because <clears throat> that's the only certification a lot of employers are aware of 
So regardless of whether the PMP is any good or not, right, it's, it's the only one many people know. So effectively, you kind of need it to work in North America in most industries. There are some exceptions. In engineering and construction and in manufacturing, industrial process projects, um, for many years, they just want to have an engineer running the project. It didn't matter if they had their PMP, as long as they had their, they were a mechanical or civil engineer, they would get the job, right? Um, but in recent years, there's been enough trouble running projects um, by engineers who just don't have good project management training or um, a lot of heavy marketing by PMI. They're starting to now ask the engineers to go get their PMPs. And I've seen this in many organizations and those engineers are frustrated because their skills might be well beyond the PMP. They're probably an IPMA level, you know, A or B or C, you know, level skill. And they're feeling they have to go backwards to get this PMP because their boss is asking for it. And they're quite frustrated because that's all PMI had for the longest time. They did create a portfolio management professional and a program management professional designation, but they didn't really take off like the PMP did. PMI was quite disappointed with how they how they progressed. And there's still knowledge based certifications, knowledge with a bit of experience. So it really doesn't get into are they any good. So effectively, in most industries in most organizations in North America, if you want to get a, a good job as a PM, a more senior job or whatever, you, you kind of need your PMP, you can get started without one. Many organizations will just hire somebody who says, Hey, I can do project management because they're so desperate for PMs right now there's a huge shortage you can probably get a job without your pmp but you probably won't progress as quickly or get the really juicy jobs because a lot of employers want to see that credential not that it means a lot but that's just what they're looking for because it's all they know now we're just in the last few years we've started to see more job postings say pmp or equivalent they're starting i think they're so desperate for pms they're starting to be more open to other alternatives and they're starting to understand that there's more options that are there. And that's all I wanted to add. Peter, back to you. Thanks, Kevin. Sorry, I'm just uh, going through the uh, the comments. Um... Right. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it is interesting. Uh, again, and this is just, uh, it's, it is a Swiss-based um, IPMA, you know, a Swiss-based organization, um, very, you know, federated model, uh, very international, but, you know, it, it, it has a strong um, European uh, base, but it's known very well internationally. They haven't done as good a job within IPMA, within sort of the Americas, um, for obvious reasons, uh, the, the, the right next door. Um, so it's certainly recognized that way. Um, in terms of operational-based non-IT and the future trends with PM recruiters, um, it, it's, it's I'll, I'll throw something in here that's slightly different. Um, one of the things that IPMA has been doing for years is recognizing the importance, one, of um, the value of assets, asset lifecycle costing and value, um, but also sustainability uh, and now regeneration. I mean, that's, it's European. Um, that's always been in um, the, uh, uh, the, the culture, the core of what they're doing. So, and as part of the certification, you know, that is being assessed. You know, it's not just the cost. You know, are you you know, are you getting the benefits from the business case that you expected? And are the stakeholders happy? And did you treat people properly? And is it good what you did? You know, it's not damaging the environment or whatever else. I uh, in North America starting to get into that. Um, recently, they've made an initiative to start to get into that area, but IPMA has always always had that. So I don't know if that perspective helps you, Anthony. Um, but it, 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 it's definitely recognized that the IPMA designations, you know, they incorporate that and culturally it, it's part of it. 
Yeah. Um, and I should, by the way, also comment, I've done very little work uh, over the past 10 years uh, in, in, in Canada. Most of my work has been international. So obviously I have a bias um, in certain things. So I, I definitely defer to uh, to Kevin um, and others in terms of that experience. But but again, what I've what I've enjoyed with IPMA and indeed ISO and some of these other things that I've been working on um, is that international multicultural, multidisciplinary perspective. I mean, even just the uh, debates on with language, you know, and what words mean and, and, and whatever else, you get very different interpretations of things, um, depending on where you are. And, and I find that IPMA deals with that really well. Um, I think PMI is getting better at it, but it, it's been, you know, fairly American. Um, yeah, they, they, they tend to be IT-ish. Which, which again was the was the agile focus, uh, but indeed I've heard that even within PMI they're they're looking at you know maybe we shouldn't be as focused on IT or, or agile maybe we should be looking at sustainability and regeneration as, as the way forward. So again it depends you know um, you know on your experiences and what's important. Um, yeah I just I, I and again this is this is you know you have to decide what is important to you. Um, and you know, uh, you know, culture, values, what your clients are going to want. Um, I have certainly had some clients in the past where this IPMA European nonsense had nothing to do with that that group, and it was more, you know, different culture, different priorities, different values, and ethics. Um, but it, you know, and again, keeping in mind, like I said, it is transitioning within. You know, all of these associations, you know, there's new priorities everywhere. My point with IPMA, though, is they've kind of always been like that. Um, so they have the experience and, and the, the, the traditions and the practices and the, the tools and techniques. I don't know if that helps. Um, are there any other um, questions or, or comments? I, I, I hope that provides, you know, as intended, um, you know, discussing the, uh, these topics. You know, that we mentioned. You know, we've gone through IPMA, we've gone through the certifications, uh, mentioned the PMAC ones, uh, may have gotten a little heavy on, on the CCT, but we're really excited about it. It's a really neat um, opportunity and, and again, very accessible um, compared to some of the other ones. So, you know, we don't want to don't want to scare you off. Sometimes there's a thought that the, you know, IPMA is really a lot of work. It For the level A, yeah, it's, that's top of the food chain. Um, but um, yeah, you, you definitely have to do some work to get that and have accomplished a lot to, to do that. But, you know, a nice, as opposed to, um, one of the things you sort of notice within the, the, and I don't know that it's transitioned, within the, 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 the North American perspective, it's sort of, um, you're, you're, you're on a project, uh, team lead, project manager, senior project manager, um, multi-project manager, program manager, portfolio manager. That's not the case in the rest of the world. Um, you know, you can be a project manager and there are levels of that. You can be a program manager and there are levels of that. IPMA deals with it really nicely. So it does provide a nice um, career pathway for you if that's the, the discipline that you want to focus on. Oop, I'm getting a reminder here. Yeah, just the, uh, again, when we went through the um, the, the PMAC, the specialty competencies, these are knowledge-based, okay? Um, so that's just, just a, an emphasis there. We have to, you do have to show a little bit of, uh, of work in the case studies, but they're, they're, uh, they're knowledge-based. So I hope that helps. If, are there any other questions? Um, anything else we can do um, to answer? I'm not seeing anything on the chat or on the participants list. So with that, I will say thank you very much. Really enjoyed this. I hope, I hope it was valuable uh, for you and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.